Hi, everybody. Thank you. We've got a great show for you tonight, don't we, Daniel? Absolutely. Absolutely, Daniel. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, uh, we've got a wonderful show for you tonight. Uh, Chuck, how you doing? Okay. Guess what? What? More letters. No way. Yep. People are writing letters to Chuck asking for his advice. My advice is to kiss off. Chuck, <laughs> you should at least answer a letter or read it on the air. Okay. Daniel, can you uh, oh, pick yeah. a letter, any letter, just any one at all? Just one. Here you go. Thank you very much. Who does your hair? 240 volt. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, dear Chuck, I'm interested in buying a new car. Rich bastard. <laughs> How can you say that? Watch. Rich bastard. <laughs> you know what I mean. You just don't call someone that because they can afford a new car. I just like saying it. Rich bastard. Stop it. <laughs> it feels good. Rich bastard. Chuck. Rich bastard. Would you stop it? Okay, I mentioned you've been buying a new car. What do you think of the Beatles? Now there's some rich bastard. <laughs> How much do you think I can get one for? Well, Ringo's your best shot at getting one cheap. What are you talking about? Well, John's no longer with us. The other two guys are rich bastards. <laughs> Would you stop saying that? Try it, you'll like it. No, I won't. Come to the dark side, Luke. <laughs> I think the Beatles, the woman in this letter is referring to are the new Volkswagen Beatles. Sure she's not interested in purchasing insects? Yes. I can get her a good deal on a dung beetle. <laughs> Considering the medium they work with. No, Chuck, she's talking about the Volks Volkswagen Beetle, which was my very first car. Really? That's right. I was still a tree back then. I don't know if you ever owned one, but these cars were ugly, underpowered, no air conditioning, but there was something about them. Yeah, and a head on, you died instantly. <laughs> it was still my first car, Chuck, and it will always mean something very special to me. Yeah. Yeah. You knock it up. I'm talking about a car here. <laughs> no use, Justin. Chuck, a car represents a kind of freedom, you know? A freedom where you no longer have to ask your dad and mom to use a car. So you hit him on the head with a tire iron and you kill him and you take it, Chuck? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're pulling off strings of dank heists with some long-legged beauty in the back seat. Now that's freedom. <laughs> so next thing you know, they're gunning you down the street like a dog. How come they're gunning you down the street like a parakeet? <laughs> anyway, uh, in answering this letter here, uh, what were they, about uh, six to eight hundred pounds uh, when they first came out here in Britain? Now, the new Volkswagen Beetle, I think, is about 16,000 pounds. Tell the woman to buy a time machine, she can really save some money. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, who's going to spend 16,000 pounds for a, for a bug, rich bastard? <laughs> Daniel Rosen, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everybody! Job in the music. Thanks very much. It's really good. You like your job here, Daniel? Oh, notes? man, I love this gig so much. It's so much better than my last job. What was that? Taking out the garbage at a sex change clinic. No. <laughs> I can picture that. Well, it, but it's better than the job I had before that. What was that? Well, uh, I used to do a lot of volunteering for scientific experiments. <laughs> well, hey, I hardly ever use that spleen anyway. <laughs> Daniel Rosen, ladies and gentlemen. See you in I was in the West End the other night when I saw the most amazing performer and had to have her on the show. From the musical Chicago, please welcome Maria Friedman. Have me a swell hat, too, yeah. 
I'll get me a boy to work with. Yeah. Somebody who can lift me up and show me off. Oh, hell, I'll get two boys. It'll free me there. Think big. Think big, Roxy. I'm gonna get me a whole bunch of boys. <sighs> loves me for loving them and I love the audience for loving me and we just love each other and that's because none of us got enough love in our childhood that's right and that showbiz kid oh yeah she's giving up her humdrum life I'm gonna be a singer Roxy Makes you want to go, ah. You let a fan mail dressed like that? Fan mail? Yes. Will you write me something to me? You saw the Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> the sticky letter. Hey, um, <laughs> uh, don't mind him. No, no, no. Uh, when you were a kid, you described yourself as a rebel. Uh, he, well, other people describe me as a rebel. I thought I was a really good girl, but... Right. Yeah, not a lot of school and quite a lot of... Well, I think other people sort of learned a lot of school. I learned to kiss and smoke. At a very young yeah, age. Yeah, a very young age, yeah. Which I would have met you, man. I don't oh. smoke anymore, but... Yeah. I sorry? smoke. You smoke? Only after sex. <laughs> <laughs> have you looked? <laughs> you were spanked a lot, huh? Chuck, please. I know about these English girls, they like spanking. I've seen their cards in the phone boxes. <laughs> uh, it's physically demanding what you do. Uh, the intensity, uh, I'm just blown away. Really, really fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it is physically demanding. The boys are pretty gorgeous, aren't they? You wouldn't, actually, it's not your type. I'm uh, actually uh, into um, uh, everything. Anything? Anything, yes. If it's living, I'll do it. <laughs> When did you realize you had a great gift for singing? Uh, when your voice broke? He did. <laughs> hey, hey. What? Women's voices don't break. They have nothing to drop. <laughs> so how old were you when you realized? It's just something that I adore doing. I love music. I love singing. You now, you started out in uh, strip joints uh, early on in your career. Oh, well, not as a stripper, I want to point out. At this point. Uh, as I, a what? A barman? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I did a European tour, and in Europe they do quite a lot of topless work and I used to be the straight act in right. clothes. You know, I was actually the same thing. Uh, years ago, I worked in a topless bottomless strip club in Alaska. No. They sandwiched Chuck and I in between the girls. Literally. No. I wish. Um, but no, there'd be a girl. She took off her clothes yeah. and then we'd come on stage and, uh, hi, we'll make you yeah, laugh. Nobody you wants know. to see us at all. No, yeah. Get off. Me, they'd probably, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You suck. <laughs> um, you're well known in Britain for your role in Casualty. Yeah. And, um, after a year you left, why was that? Well, I like doing different things all the time, and if you're playing a social worker in a, in a long-running series, you kind of know what your next line's going to be. You're right. going to open the cubicle curtains, and there's going to be somebody pretty poorly in there, and you have to ask them if they want a cup of tea, or they've eaten, or something like that, and then you go home, you get back on your train and go back from Bristol to London. <laughs> now, I respect the fact you're able to keep your personal life 
private. Yeah, it's probably just not very interesting. But uh, yeah, nobody wants to we know. Won't, we won't dwell. That's good. What are you trying to hide? <laughs> Did you kill somebody? <laughs> not yet. Another dancer, perhaps? <laughs> not yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's so hot. <laughs> You've won Olivier Awards. Something that prestigious. Is that, um, is that meaningful as, a, as an actress? It is, yeah. Is it like the height? I don't know if it's the height, but it's really good if you've been working very hard and somebody likes what you've done. Yeah. 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 You know, that's, uh, that's like an old American Indian expression. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you hope for the future? Um, <laughs> not to meet him again. <laughs> My hope for the future. Healthy, happy, well. Work. Work. Those sort of right. things. Not money. to work. Money, money, yes, money, absolutely. But not here, obviously. This is a sort of, you know, charity event. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, if, if Pinocchio, have you got anything like Pinocchio? You know, when he lies, his nose grows. Does everything um, happen with you? Yes, actually. Um, yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> you sit on me and make me tell lies. <laughs> We're gonna take a break, stick around. Awesome. Your putty dog noses. Hey! <laughs> you're gonna sit there until you tell me where you hid the Semtex. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Teddy Bear. Teddy? What? You going somewhere? Uh, no. Well, what's the suitcase doing there? What suitcase? The one right there. <laughs> that is a suitcase. Yeah, I know it's your suitcase. Why, well, you're right, Teddy. Of course I'm right. What I want to know is, why is your suitcase here? Mr. Suitcase? Why are you here? Teddy, I don't think the suitcase is going to give me the answer I'm looking for. Maybe he doesn't know. <laughs> I'm asking you, why is your suitcase here? Uh, it followed me? <laughs> no, it did not. See, Dave, you seem to know more about this than me. <laughs> I think you're going somewhere. You do know more than me. I think you're going somewhere and you don't want me to know. No, you know too much. <laughs> where are you going, Teddy? I'm going to a place where there's music and, and animals and people screaming. Going to a soccer match? Quiet. <laughs> I'm going to join the circus. The circus? <laughs> Teddy. Now, Teddy, Teddy. <laughs> Why are you going to join the circus? What, what are you going to do with the circus? Uh, he can get the bearded lady a night off. Quiet. <laughs> I'm going to be a tightrope walker. Have to hold a tow rope to hold your fat ass. Did you shut up? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to ride a bicycle with one wheel. You I mean a unicycle? God bless you. <laughs> I think God has changed this channel a long time ago. Be quiet. Why are you going to join the circus? Don't you like living with us? I'm running away from home. Oh, oh Teddy, can I have your snoopy toothbrush? No! <laughs> How about your giant bag of building blocks? No! <laughs> your push bike? No! I'm taking it all with me. Teddy, that's a, that's a lot to carry. Yeah. Think the circus can pick me up? <laughs> Well, the freak show will. <laughs> Teddy, why do you want to join the circus anyway? It's a place where there's music and fun and games, candy floss, rides, and I can wear a tutu. <laughs> Teddy, 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 the circus is not all fun and games. Yes, it is. No. If you join the circus, you'd have to get up at the crack of dawn and shovel horse shit. Quiet. 
get to put up the huge circus tent and shovel tiger shit. Quiet! <laughs> You'd set up the rides and shuttle Chuck. <laughs> Lion Chuck. Shit. <laughs> How'd I have to do all that? I didn't get to the elephant yet. <laughs> Teddy, being in the circus is a lot of hard work. <sighs> I don't want to join the circus then. Well, then you unpack your suitcase and come back to live with us? What suitcase? <laughs> the one right there. Oh, I was going to join the circus. <laughs> My next guest is a man I had the pleasure of interviewing last year, and he's a real character. There's never a dull moment. Brian Sewell. <laughs> Welcome back. It's a pleasure to see you again. Beethoven, for me. Yes, yes. I think but you deserve nothing but uh, the best. Well, too nice to see you again, Mr. Sewer. <laughs> Where did you park your horse and cart? <laughs> anyway. Just outside. I think I've got some... Oh, that's no. Come on, <laughs> It's great to have you back. What do you think of the, the Monet exhibit? There's uh, a lot of hoopla going on. And, uh... They're jolly good pictures for a blind man, you know. He was absolutely blind in one eye when he painted most really? of them. Really? And sort of 70% blind in the other. When he painted all the garden, uh, garden lilies? Well, and... yes. Most of those would do very well as biscuit tin tops. <laughs> they usually are. Now, who won the Turner Prize this year? It was a girl, wasn't it? Or was it a boy? Well, I can't remember. <laughs> the prize was a girl. I, I would have liked I, to have won that. Yes, I think they were all girls. I think there, I think there was, yes, it, it was an, it I was think the winner woman, was yeah. some sort of sculpture using elephant dung. Well, he's a boy, of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. a boy would have to do that, not a yes. girl. Yes. But yes. how do you hang elephant dung on the wall? Very um, carefully. <laughs> species from a different species. <laughs> do go on. Is it true that pun in your mouth has turned into a croon? How do we go on without him? What's going on with the House of Lords? Oh, they've decided to get rid of the her hereditary peers. <laughs> Chuck, please. <clears throat> it's, it's... Hey, you're safe now, Brian. You're safe. <laughs> the trouble with the trouble with messing about with the House of Lords is that it's really fundamentally unimportant. Chuck, it, it, stop it! <laughs> Have my shitty shoe. <laughs> Just stop it! The House of Lords, um, they're doing away with the uh, hereditary... Yes, the hereditary peers. They, they really should have reformed the Commons, and never mind the Lords. We have a House of Commons with six, some 600 supposedly democratically elected MPs in it. Most of them are uh, in on minority votes. They have no business to be there. They don't upper represent... Upper-class wankers, the what they are. <laughs> upper-class what? Uh, <laughs> No, it would, it would be a good thing to reform the commons, leave the Lords alone, sort the commons out first. Get rid of the whips. <laughs> There's an opening for you. I think I'll keep it shut. <laughs> you like whips, don't you? No. <laughs> differences in the House of Lords and the Commons. Well, one's common and the other's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing uh, for the millennium? I'm ignoring it as far as possible. You're going to lock the door and shag a corgi. <laughs> I'm not spending millennium at Buckingham Palace. Um, where are you going to be for what is not going to be the millennium? I just moved. 
which is why there are holes in my fingers and scratches and bruises on my legs carrying things. My God, you're Jesus. <laughs> Where did you move from? Kensington. Oh, which is harsh. <laughs> Where are you living now? Wimbledon. Oh, really? Yes. It's a big place. It's got a garden, which the other house didn't have. What do you sow in your garden? Um, dog shit, miss. <laughs> uh, you into motor cars? What, what's the best car for pulling? Pulling what? Well, not a caravan. <laughs> The best car pulling has, has to be open. It has to have a long tail and a high rump. I'm talking about the car. <laughs> I love to call him an evening standard. What happened to it? It's in abeyance because the new editor has just said, you know, um, That's so I, don't, I, don't, I don't like boy play things, so this is going to be a women's magazine. So out go the motor cars, and out go the motorcycles, and out go things like um, screwdrivers and all the things so that men, like men, men are interested in. Yeah. Little boys, like toys, and whips and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think are of you, women drivers? Are you, are you into it, Smith? Yes, I am. Is that why you're wearing that belt? Uh, no. Oh. She had a very high threshold of pain. <laughs> I bet you would respond to Red Hot Poker. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> would you stop and talk to you? Why do most British men think more of their cars than of their women? They're more attractive. <laughs> On cold mornings, are easier to turn over. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. It's and, a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian <laughs> Daniel. What about my guest spot? Look at this loser, huh? Look how he dresses. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, uh, sure, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Rosen. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. John, John Gleason, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay, I'm going to attempt. Well, first I top this 95-foot-tall wheel of death while juggling. I'm going to eat these things. So I'm going to throw it off. Sadly, we've come to the end of this series. My thanks to all my guests. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we have. Until next time, good night. Ah, this is a life. You. Dressing room. Makeup person. Moist towelettes. Teddy girls. Hookers. Free slip hookers. Did I say hookers? I meant uh, bottled water. Oh, yeah. Love bottled water. Love that water going down. Shh, <laughs>